So, Mr. Ponders, we have a question from M. Crespo. What's a way to attack philosophical naturalism in a dialogue? Uh, a good way is probably with the, w w what you've uh, specialized in, with mention of the, the hard problem of consciousness. You start to try to, to explore uh, this issue of well, what, what is it um, when we're talking about consciousness? Can this be reduced simply to um, you know, a material basis? Is, you know, is the foundation of consciousness just atoms bouncing off atoms? Um, and can this help sort of explain what consciousness is? Um, so I'd probably do the Uno reverse card and slam it straight back towards you there. <laughs> no, no, that was very good. I mean, what I would say is just before we answer that question, it's so easy to do with philosophical naturalism because what's their claim? Everything, all phenomena can be reduced to physical processes or explained by physical stuff. If you can find one thing that can't be explained by physical process stuff, philosophical naturalism crumbles. It crumbles. So they got such a crazy claim. In actual fact, me and Sabun used to bring up to, to uh, talk about this topic. It's called they've got an epistemic prison. They have an epistemic prison that like everything is just physical. Like they've imprisoned their minds. They're not, they're not open minded. At least in the Islamic epistemological tradition, we accept both. You know, Ahlan wa Sahlan physical stuff, Ahlan wa Sahlan metaphysics, Ahlan wa Sahlan a bit of, you know, uh, you know, uh, non physical stuff, no problem. We, 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 and we, and our worldview, our first principles, the Islamic metaphysic explains reality perfectly philosophical naturalism is like they're like a horse with blinders on they're only seeing one way or they look into the horizon and say look yes the earth must be flat they have a very reductionist perspective and you're right if we can show that there's one thing that cannot be explained by physical processes ergo consciousness or the hard problem of consciousness philosophical naturalism as a project utterly fails so board your thoughts How does morality oh, play into this? How does morality play into this? Yeah, sorry, I was uh, on mute. Um, you know, the thing that you said about one particular thing uh, being able to challenge the entire paradigm of uh, philosophical naturalism, I think it's not it's not only the case that one thing can crumble it, but they have an uphill struggle already plugging the holes. So, for example, when it comes to contemporary things like morality. Right, they basically have to bite the bullet and say it is, uh, it just doesn't exist, it's, it's a pure subjective construct. Right, that's a very hard sort of pill to swallow because essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be challenging all of human history. Because as Adnan would tell you, if you look at the recorded history of human beings on earth, we've been moved by moral issues, moral issues of say leadership. And that's led to revolutions that that's led to, um, you know, new countries be, being made, world wars and all these types of even social movements that exist in the world today are driven by morality. So if someone denies philosophical, uh, so if anyone wants to accept philosophical naturalism, they'll have to deny the human experience of really believing in these things. And these are the driving forces of human behavior, right? Morality is essentially what drives us. If I say to everybody right now, one plus one is two. You'll all be like, okay. And what if I say to you, you know, right now in the world, there are this many people who are starving and it's capitalism, which is the cause of this. Everyone gets riled up and Yusuf kicks over his shelf or whatever, right? <laughs> people get riled up by this, right? Why? Because morality moves us. Morality is important. So philosophical naturalism definitely has a huge hole to fill. Um, Sabor, let's put up, yes. Adnan has a, the most, one of the most funniest and most powerful arguments against philosophical naturalism. I had this discussion with him in, in Islamabad, and he was dead serious. Like there was this guy, <laughs> I don't want to embarrass Adnan, but it's one of the most funniest but amazing moments. It was this guy, I think he was a bit of an atheist, I had a discussion with him, and Adnan just like said, look, look, come with me, I'm going to show you some jinn. <laughs> 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 or something like that. I'm not repeat the argument that you told the brother, or you told the. It, it, tell us the funny story. Yeah, I I believe uh, it's a it's a valid argument. If we can show the supernatural, then naturalism falls on its face. Okay, 
this radical naturalism that everything is material. There is no spiritual world. I mean, how do you explain true dreams, for example? How do you explain true dreams? Oh wow, now, good you, point. If, yeah, if you if you're gonna if you're gonna tell me, oh, these are just hallucinations or these are just imaginations, no, I'm not gonna accept that because I know people personally who have no reason to lie to me. They have told me they've had true dreams and they came to pass. I know someone, for example, I mean, I don't mean to beat my father's drum. My father had a dream. He was in uh, he was doing Umrah uh, two to three years ago and uh, his grandfather came to him in a, in a dream and he told him to go to a certain place in a dream. He told him, go to a certain place and you will find something there. And, and the long story short, it was exactly how his grandfather, his grandfather told him in the dream. This is exactly, he went and he found exactly what was said to him. Now, you tell me that this was all imagination or his hallucinations. He was having some kind of, you know, a matrix moment or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not going to accept that because there are so many other examples like that. How do you, how do you explain true dreams? How do you explain the supernatural experiences people have? And these are real things. You can't just dismiss them. You can't just say, oh, this is all imagination. This is all rubbish, made up superstition and all that. It doesn't work like that. So I believe these arguments are very valid. They are valid arguments. And because most atheists, not if not all, um, you know, most atheists are naturalists. They are materialists. They, they, they really they find it very difficult to accept things like this. There are atheists who are spiritual in some sense. And they find it possibly interesting. They find things like this interesting. But but most atheists, unfortunately, are completely blind to the spiritual world or the supernatural, you know, if you if you like. So my brothers and sisters, on that note, I really want to remind you why we are here today. The reason why we, we, the reason we're having this discussion is to highlight the importance of such projects. Okay. There are hardly any Muslims in the world, my brothers and sisters. Let me remind you who are doing this work. These brothers are doing. Brother Hamza has written a book on atheism. Okay. Books written on atheism by Muslims, you can count them on one hand. You can count them on one hand. There are hardly any Muslim intellectuals out there who have written books on atheism. Okay. There we have Brother Sabur, who is doing work on Darwinism or um, philosophy of science, he's going to be studying, inshallah. Okay. Who is doing that? I'm pretty sure there are people out there, but they, they, we don't see them in public. They're not defending Islam. They're not coming out to represent Islam. Very few people in the world are doing this work. And this bunch in front of you, okay, Brother Yusuf is there, who has been at it for a very long time, mashallah, in the field of Dawah, who is uh, having dialogues and discussions with atheists and all sorts of people, right? How many people do you have out there who are actually doing this work? a small group of people and we are very 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 uh dedicated to this work inshallah by the grace of allah what we want from you is to support the work so that it continues without your support of course allah is there allah will support us allah will create the asbab the means for us to continue right but you can also be the vehicle you can also be the supporters every single outcome we have through our work you will have a reward in that so you are planting seeds Okay, any work of dawah, any work of dawah, whether it, it is defensive or progressive, okay, any work of dawah, yeah, it, it is like planting, planting seeds in the minds and hearts of people. This is a battle of hearts and minds. Islamophobia industry is a multi billion, uh, multi -billion dollars industry. Uh, as I said, Hollywood and Bollywood, and uh, now all the other woods are at it, right? So, my brothers and sisters, we are very limited in numbers and in finances, right? We need your support. You need to come forward and start making donations, inshallah. Don't hesitate. It's the month of Ramadan. Every good yeah. deed you do in this month will be multiplied 70 times. Yeah. Allah revealed the Quran in this month as a mercy, as a manifestation of His mercy. Shahru Ramadan, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan rajim Shahru Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Hudal lin nas wa bayyinatin min al-huda wal furqan the reason we are Muslims is because of this revelation of the Quran. The reason we are sitting here right now in front of you is because of the Quran, because of the mercy Allah revealed in this month. 
and it is time to defend this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all sorts of attacks. Attacks coming from Christian missionaries, attacks coming from extremist atheists, attacks coming from extremist Islamophobes. You know, all, these are the kind of people who are instigating attacks on Muslims around the world. Okay, these are the kind of extremists who peddle Islamophobia around the world. They are the ones who are causing, uh, you know, harm to Muslims globally because no one is clarifying those misconceptions. There are hardly any voices out there. And we're trying to raise our voices. We're trying to do the work. We're trying to create platforms so people can hear our side of the story, so that people can hear our arguments. Why are we Muslims? Why are we so persistent in believing in Islam? Exactly. Why are we so adamant? And the point is, you need to support this work, my brothers and sisters. The link is rolling on the screen in front of you repeatedly. And it is there right now. Sapiensinstitute.org forward slash donate live is the link. Share the link. By the way, you can click the link on the descriptions. You know, you can, if you go to the video's description, you can find the link there. Otherwise, type it in your phones and in your laptops. Also, you can share the link. Take the link and share it on your WhatsApp groups, family groups, with uncles, with aunties. Tell them to donate. Tell them to make donations. This is your time to make a difference, inshallah ta'ala. Have we matched that 1,000 pounds donation so far? Uh, no. No. Don't okay, so. we need someone to come forward. We need okay. one or two people to lay, put, pick up the phones and st start calling in or send us yes. messages, and we will get your message, inshallah. Make that donation of a thousand pounds. We have someone waiting already, ready to match it. So, if you want that person to match your donation, your reward will be double. And, and the person who actually encouraged by coming forward, encouraging others, his reward will be double. So your, your reward will be double because you are donating. On top of that, it will be multiplied 70 times because of the month of Ramadan. And the brother who encouraged you, his reward, reward will be double. He is doing a good deed and someone else is doing it because of him. Yeah. So my brothers and sisters, don't hesitate. Start making a difference, inshallah. Pick up your yeah. phone. Or... We have a, 